What is up guys? It's your boy Mr. Dion back for another video. I was actually scrolling down the comments on one of my videos and I saw this comment. He's actually right, we need to work on this project. I would like to drift that thing in snow. So we got the engine right here. Just in case some people don't remember, we had a bad valve seat. This engine had zero compression. I replaced the valve seat off camera. We could not reassemble the engine because we were missing a valve spring retainer. I was cleaning the garage one day and I found it. The compression on this thing should be super duper high. I think the first thing we should do is to get this engine ready. In order to get this thing ready, we need to install the camshaft, the timing chain. We need to adjust the timing on that engine as well. So let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into this shit. <laughs> With 89 PSI of compression, it is almost guaranteed that this engine will start. So, we have our lawnmower frame right here. We have a lot of things to do on this thing. Here we have the Polaris swing arm. I really don't know from which Polaris this swing arm is from. It might not look like it, but the bearings are in perfect condition and the axle doesn't have any play in it. The sprockets on the XR650Ls are on the left side of the engine. Here on the axle, we have the sprocket on the right side. Not much of a problem. Look at this. <laughs> so now that the engine is temporarily installed in the front of the mower, we can now go ahead and reinforce this rear engine mount. Blew out the breaker. Fuck! This is actually where it gets challenging. We need to line up the engine sprocket with the swing arm sprocket. Then we'll go ahead and weld this rear engine mount. Fuck man, I'm gonna have a hard time! Have a look at this guys, we have the swing arm right here and this is where the swing arm is going to mount on the frame. This thing needs to be super duper solid and super duper straight. I'm actually not gonna lie guys, this thing looks goofy AF. <laughs> we absolutely need to get rid of these front wheels. We are going to try to find another pair of these tires to put in front of the mower. Another reason why this thing looks goofy AF. The front end of this thing is wider than the rear end. One in the Chinese four-wheeler God's tarnish. So we actually need to buy some spacers for the rear end of this thing. I'm pretty confident that this thing will look good once completed. Whoa, who are you? Six days later, guys, we are finally back in the insulated garage to work on the 
on the Swap More project. For five days, I was insulating this garage, but in the meantime, I was actually thinking about how to make this work. What we need to do right now is install the swing arm on this mower frame. Then we need to install this Chinese suspension. What I was trying to do in the first part of this video is install the engine and the swing arm at the same time and then line up the freaking chain. Doing both at the same time wasn't making any sense. I don't know why I was doing it that way. As you can see, I removed the engine from the frame. It's right here because I think it'll be way much easier to install that swing arm on the mower first and then line up the engine with the swing arm. Yep, yep, yep. I made these heavy duty brackets for the swing arm off camera. That's the only thing I did off camera. These are not fully welded. I just don't want to fully weld them yet. I don't know if I'll need to remove them later on. You know, sometimes you ran into some freaking annoying issues. What I did right here is a frame extension. The main reason to this is to mount our shock on something that is actually strong. The second reason why I built this frame extension is to have something solid to mount our seat on. Now what we need to do is fully weld this whole frame because all of this is tack welded. So we need to bring the mower outside for at least two hours of welding. So let's not waste any more time and let's start welding the frame. So finally, we got our diesel heater after freaking two weeks. Come on, Amazon. This thing outputs 28,000 BTUs at full power. It is actually at full power and it's been running for 34 minutes. It's minus 11 degrees Celsius outside and we got almost four degrees Celsius inside. This is quite impressive. I can feel the heat from here. If I put my hand any closer from the air output of this thing, I'm just gonna burn my hand. Ah, no, I can't. You only need a 12 volt battery to make these work. They only output 40 watts at full power. So I went a little bit overkill and I plugged that thing on my little T500 power station and it's working like a charm. I don't know which type of batteries are in this power station, but they are freaking durable. I plugged my PlayStation 5 and my TV on this thing and I was able to get 7 hours of playtime with that thing. But this thing will run for days. They come with a 5 liter fuel tank. It's a small fuel tank, but with 5 liters of diesel, you can get 9 hours of runtime with that thing on full power. So it's not bad, it's not bad. I also cheated the system a little bit. I added a 12 feet exhaust tube will keep some of the heat from the exhaust inside of the garage. It was a pain in the ass to drill that one and a half inch hole in the cement. $180 for that thing is a good deal. Back to the video. We need to make a suspension mount for the frame extension I just made. We need to mount this shock. Oh. We need to mount this shock on something so we need two shock mounts. Right here and on top. We need to reinforce this part of the frame extension. So I'm going to weld these square tubings right here. Then I'm going to take this shock and I'm going to weld this shock mount right here. A few moments later. So as you can see guys, I'm not doing fancy stuff on this thing, I'm not measuring like a crazy maniac. I just want this thing to work, I just want to drive that thing. So if it goes straight, and if it holds together, I'm fine with it.
There is one last thing I want to do to this more in this video guys and that is installing the engine because we want to know if the engine lines up with the swing arm. This XR650L chain is too short for this mower frame but it'll still help us to line up the engine with the swing arm. Come here little <laughs> Why the fuck? <laughs> One eternity later. The chain is installed on the engine sprocket and also on the swing arm. The engine is right there. As you can see, the chain is way too short. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this on camera, but the engine is not lining up with the swing arm. We need to move the engine at least one inch to the left. All I can see right here is a tubing that I'll need to cut because it'll be in the way. So we did a lot of things on this thing outside. The whole frame is completely welded and I reinforced a lot of things on this. The side panels on this thing, they were flopping around. They were all loose. I cut the old chassis plate that was right here and I welded this metal plate. So now these side panels are welded onto this plate and this plate is welded onto the frame extension. So it's super duper solid right now. What we need to do in the next video, start the engine, reposition the engine, buy a longer chain, finish our frame because the frame is not done yet. We still need to reinforce the frame. We need to buy two sprockets because the engine sprocket and the swing arm sprocket doesn't have the same tooth size. So with that being said, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace!